Have you ever found yourself in a storm of trials where every word you speak seems to make things worse? In moments of frustration and pain, it's natural to want to voice our complaints, to shout out in anger or despair. But what if I told you that there's a divine wisdom in staying silent, a greater purpose in keeping your mouth shut during these difficult times? In the next few moments, we're going to explore the 10 reasons why God wants you to hold your tongue when you're facing trials. These aren't just suggestions. These are life-changing principles that can transform the way you handle adversity and deepen your faith journey. In a world that's constantly buzzing with noise, where everyone's fighting to have their voice heard, God is calling you to a revolutionary act to keep your mouth shut during your trials. First and foremost, my dear friends, when we encounter trials and tribulations in life, it can be tempting to let our words flow freely, to complain, to question, or to cry out in frustration. Yet there is profound wisdom in choosing silence during these challenging times. Silence isn't merely the absence of speech. It's a powerful spiritual practice that cultivates inner strength and deepens our relationship with God. In the quiet moments of adversity, we create space for God's voice to resonate within our hearts. By stilling our own thoughts and restraining our tongues, we open ourselves to divine guidance and comfort. This intentional silence becomes a form of active listening, allowing us to tune into the whispers of the Holy Spirit. Silence in trials is like tending to a garden of faith. Just as a gardener must patiently wait for seeds to sprout and grow, our spiritual fortitude develops in the fertile soil of quiet perseverance. Each moment we choose not to react impulsively or complain is a moment we're nurturing the seeds of patience, trust, and resilience. Over time, these seeds blossom into a lush garden of spiritual maturity, able to withstand the harshest storms of life. Consider the example of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Facing his greatest trial, he sought solitude and silence to commune with the Father. His strength in that quiet moment prepared him for the immense challenges ahead. Similarly, when we embrace silence during our own trials, we're following in Christ's footsteps, drawing strength from the same well of divine power. Silence also serves as a refining fire for our character. In the heat of trials, our first words often spring from fear, anger, or doubt. By holding our tongue, we give ourselves the opportunity to process our emotions and align our hearts with God's truth. This pause allows us to respond from a place of faith rather than reacting from a place of fear. Moreover, silence in trials is an act of trust. It's a tangible way of demonstrating our faith that God is in control, even when circumstances seem chaotic. By refraining from hasty words or desperate pleas, we're declaring our confidence in God's plan and timing. This trust not only strengthens our own faith, but also serves as a powerful witness to those around us. In the stillness, we often find clarity. The noise of our own complaints and anxieties can cloud our judgment and obscure God's direction. But in the quiet, we can more clearly discern His will and gain new perspectives on our situations. What initially seemed like an insurmountable obstacle may reveal itself as an opportunity for growth or a stepping stone to greater blessings. Embracing silence during trials also cultivates humility. It reminds us that we don't have all the answers and that our understanding is limited. This humility opens the door to greater wisdom and deeper reliance on God. As James 1.19 reminds us, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. This scripture underscores the value of measured, thoughtful responses rooted in patient listening, both to God and to others. Remember, dear friend, that silence doesn't mean inaction. It's not about passively enduring hardships, but actively engaging with God in the quiet moments. It's in this silence that we often find the strength to persevere, the courage to face our challenges, and the peace that surpasses all understanding. As you face your own trials, I encourage you to embrace the power of silence. Let it be your refuge, your training ground, and your act of worship. In the quiet, you'll find God's presence more tangible, His love more evident, and His strength more accessible. 
your spiritual muscles will grow stronger with each silent moment, preparing you not just to endure trials, but to triumph through. Next, when we find ourselves in the midst of life's trials, it's natural to want to cry out, to voice our frustrations, and to seek comfort in our own words. Yet, there's a profound truth that often eludes us. Silence can be our greatest ally in times of trouble. By choosing to keep our mouths shut during trials, we open ourselves to a deeper, more transformative experience of God's presence. Silence amplifies God's voice in ways we might never expect. Think of your heart as a delicate radio receiver, constantly tuned to pick up signals from the world around you. In times of difficulty, this receiver is often overwhelmed by the static of our own thoughts and words, our complaints, our fears, our anger. But when we intentionally quiet ourselves, something remarkable happens. The static clears, and suddenly we can hear the gentle whisper of God's voice with stunning clarity. This isn't just poetic imagery. It's a spiritual reality that countless believers have experienced throughout the ages. The psalmist understood this when he wrote, Be still and know that I am God. This stillness isn't just physical. It's a quieting of our entire being, including our speech. When we embrace this silence, we create a sacred space within ourselves where divine communication can flourish. Imagine standing at the edge of a vast, still lake. Your words are like pebbles thrown into those waters, creating ripples that distort the surface. But in silence, the lake becomes a perfect mirror, reflecting the beauty of the sky above. Similarly, when we quiet our tongues, our hearts become reflective surfaces, capable of mirroring God's truth and love with astonishing clarity. In this silence, we often discover that God's voice doesn't boom like thunder. It whispers like a gentle breeze. It's in these quiet moments that we can truly internalize His promises, feel the depth of His love, and gain the strength to endure our trials. The prophet Elijah experienced this firsthand when he encountered God not in the wind, earthquake, or fire, but in a still, small voice. Moreover, silence gives us the opportunity to listen not just with our ears, but with our whole being. It's a chance to tune into the frequency of faith, hope, and love that God is constantly broadcasting. In the quiet, we can feel the rhythm of His heartbeat for us, sense the warmth of His presence, and absorb the peace that surpasses all understanding. This practice of silent receptivity isn't passive, it's an active, intentional choice to trust in God's wisdom over our own limited understanding. It's an acknowledgement that sometimes the most powerful prayer we can offer is simply our attentive presence before the Lord. In these moments, we allow God to speak directly to our situation, often in ways far more profound than we could have articulated ourselves. As you face your trials, Remember that your silence is not a sign of weakness or defeat. Rather, it's a declaration of trust in a God who is bigger than your circumstances. It's an act of faith, believing that the one who calmed the storm with a word can bring peace to your turbulent heart. In your silence, you're saying, Lord, I trust you to fight this battle for me. I'm listening for your guidance. So the next time you're tempted to fill the air with words during a trial, pause. Take a deep breath and choose silence instead. Create that sacred space within yourself where God's voice can resonate clearly. Furthermore, when trials and tribulations beset us, our tongues often itch to unleash a torrent of words. Yet in these moments of adversity, God gently urges us toward silence, for He knows the power and peril that lie within our speech. Silence, far from being passive, becomes an active shield against sin-tainted words that could wound both ourselves and others. Consider the wisdom of Proverbs 13.3, those who guard their lips preserve their lives, but those who speak rashly will come to ruin. This verse illuminates a profound truth. Our words have the power to shape our destiny. By choosing silence in times of trial, we erect a fortress of restraint, safeguarding our hearts and minds from the temptation to lash out in anger frustration, or despair. Imagine your mouth as a dam, holding back a reservoir of emotions. 
As trials intensify, so too does the pressure behind this dam. The urge to release this pent-up energy through speech can be overwhelming. Yet by maintaining silence, you prevent a flood of potentially destructive words from surging forth and wreaking havoc in your relationships and Christian witness. This silence is not born of weakness, but of strength rooted in faith. It reflects a deep trust in God's sovereignty, acknowledging that He is in control even when circumstances seem chaotic. By refraining from hasty speech, you create space for the Holy Spirit to work within you, tempering your emotions and aligning your heart with God's will. Moreover, silence in trials offers an opportunity for introspection and growth. In the quiet moments, free from the distraction of our own voices, we can more clearly hear God's whispers of comfort and guidance. This stillness allows us to process our emotions more fully, leading to greater self-awareness and spiritual maturity. Remember, beloved, that our Lord Jesus himself often chose silence in the face of accusation and trial. His example teaches us that there is immense power in restraint. When we hold our tongues, we mirror Christ's composure and dignity, offering a powerful testimony to the transformative power of faith. In practice, maintaining silence during trials requires deliberate effort and divine assistance. Begin by acknowledging your human weakness and asking the Holy Spirit for the strength to guard your words. Develop the habit of pausing before speaking, taking a moment to consider whether your words will build up or tear down. Cultivate an attitude of humility, recognizing that you may not have all the answers or the full picture of the situation. As you embrace this discipline of silence, you may find that it not only prevents sin-tainted speech, but also opens new avenues for God's love to flow through you. Your restraint can become a powerful witness to others, demonstrating the peace that surpasses understanding, which only Christ can provide. In your silence, others may hear God's voice more clearly, as your actions speak louder than any words could. Let us not underestimate the spiritual warfare that often underlies our trials. The enemy seeks to use our words as weapons against us and those we love. By choosing silence, we deny him this opportunity and instead align ourselves more closely with God's purposes. This silent strength becomes a testament to our faith, showing that our trust lies not in our ability to defend ourselves verbally, but in God's unfailing love and protection. As you face trials, big and small, Remember that your silence can be a sacred offering to God. It is a declaration of trust, a commitment to self-control, and an invitation for divine intervention. Through this practice, you allow God's perfect peace to guard your heart and mind, transforming potential moments of sin into opportunities for grace and growth. Moreover, when trials and tribulations come upon us, it can be tempting to unleash a torrent of words, to cry out, complain, or attempt to reason our way through the storm. Yet there is profound wisdom in choosing silence during these challenging times. Silence, far from being passive or weak, demonstrates a deep and abiding trust in God's sovereignty over our lives. As we quiet our lips and still our hearts, we create space for God's voice to resonate within us. In the hushed moments of our trials, we affirm our belief that the Lord of all creation holds our circumstances in His mighty hands. Our silence becomes a powerful declaration. Though I do not understand, I trust you, God. Consider the example of Jesus before His accusers. When faced with false charges and impending crucifixion, He often remained silent. His restraint wasn't born of fear or defeat, but of complete submission to the Father's will. In following Christ's example, we too can embrace silence as an act of spiritual strength and surrender. Silence in the face of adversity is countercultural in a world that demands immediate responses and constant noise. Yet it is in this very silence that we find our greatest witness. Those around us, accustomed to panic and endless chatter in times of trouble, will take notice of our quiet confidence. Our peace amid chaos becomes a testament to the living God within us. This doesn't mean we never speak or seek counsel during difficult times. 
Rather, it's about cultivating a spirit of calm trust before we open our mouths. It's about pausing to remember who is truly in control before we react. In doing so, we honor God and invite His perfect peace to guard our hearts and minds. Picture your silence as fertile soil in which God plants seeds of growth, wisdom, and revelation. As you resist the urge to fill every moment with words, you create room for divine insights to take root. Often, it's in the quiet that God speaks most clearly, offering comfort and direction we might have missed in our own flurry of words. Embracing silence during trials also protects us from the pitfalls of hasty speech. How often have we said things in moments of distress that we later regretted? By holding our tongue, we avoid adding the weight of ill-chosen words to our burdens. Instead, we give ourselves time to process, pray, and respond with grace when we do speak. Remember, your Heavenly Father knows your needs before you even ask. Your silence doesn't leave Him uninformed or uncaring. On the contrary, it positions you to receive His care more fully. Like a child who stops crying to listen to a parent's soothing voice, your quiet trust allows you to hear God's whispers of love and assurance. As you practice this discipline of silence, you'll find it becomes easier over time. What once felt like restraint will transform into a natural reflex, a turning to God rather than to your own understanding. This silent strength will become a hallmark of your faith, inspiring others to seek the source of your unshakable peace. In your quiet moments, meditate on scriptures that remind you of God's faithfulness. Let His promises wash over you anchoring your soul in truth. As you do, you'll discover that silence isn't the absence of action, but the presence of a deeper, more profound connection with your Creator. So when trials come, and they will, remember the power of your silence. It speaks volumes about your faith louder than any words could. It honors God, calms your spirit, and testifies to a watching world. In your silence, let God's love echo, His hope shine, and His faithfulness be on full display. Additionally, when trials come, our first instinct is often to speak out, to defend ourselves, to complain, or to seek validation from others. But there's profound wisdom in choosing silence during these challenging times. Silence fosters humility, a virtue that God cherishes and that can transform our spiritual journey in remarkable ways. Think of your ego as a balloon, constantly seeking to expand and take up more space. Each time you choose to speak in self-defense or self-justification, you're essentially pumping more air into that balloon. But when you opt for silence, you're gently releasing some of that air, allowing your ego to deflate just a little. This creates room for something far more powerful to fill that space, God's grace. In the quiet moments of trials, we're given a precious opportunity to reflect on our own limitations and acknowledge that God's wisdom far surpasses our own. As Isaiah 55, 9 reminds us, As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. By keeping our mouths shut, we're essentially saying, Lord, I trust your plan more than my own understanding. Humility isn't about thinking less of yourself. It's about thinking of yourself less. When we choose silence, we shift our focus from self-preservation to God glorification. We're living out John the Baptist's powerful declaration, he must become greater, I must become less. This shift in perspective is transformative, allowing us to see our trials not as personal affronts, but as opportunities for spiritual growth. Consider the example of Jesus during his trial before Pilate. When false accusations were hurled at him, he remained silent. His silence wasn't weakness. It was strength rooted in complete trust in the Father's plan. By emulating Christ's humble silence, we align ourselves more closely with his character and open ourselves up to his power working through us. Silence in trials also creates space for genuine listening, both to God and to others. When we're not busy formulating our next response or defense, we can truly hear what God might be trying to teach us through our circumstances. This receptive posture allows the Holy Spirit to work in our hearts, molding us more into the image of Christ.
Moreover, silent humility has a powerful witness to those around us. In a world that prizes self-promotion and quick comebacks, choosing to remain quiet in the face of adversity is countercultural. It speaks volumes about our faith and can draw others to wonder about the source of our peace. Remember, dear friend, that God often speaks in a still, small voice. By cultivating silence and humility during trials, we create the perfect conditions to hear His guidance and experience His comfort. This doesn't mean we never speak up or share our burdens with trusted friends, but it does mean that our first response is to turn inward and upward rather than lashing out or seeking human validation. As you face your next trial, I encourage you to embrace the power of humble silence. Let your ego deflate a little, making room for God's grace to lift you higher than you could ever elevate yourself. Trust that in your quiet surrender, God is doing a mighty work, both in you and through you. For it's often in our moments of greatest humility that God's strength is most perfectly. It's also worth noting that when we embrace silence during our trials, we open the door to a profound transformation in our hearts and relationships. Silence, far from being empty or passive, becomes a powerful tool for cultivating deep empathy and understanding. As we quiet our own voices, we create space to truly hear and connect with those around us, mirroring the compassionate heart of Christ. In the stillness of our silent moments, our hearts become like sponges, absorbing the experiences, pain, and joys of others. This absorption isn't just a superficial acknowledgement. It's a deep, cellular-level change that expands our capacity to love and serve as Jesus did. We begin to see the world through the eyes of those we encounter, feeling their burdens as if they were our own. The Bible reminds us in James 1.19, My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. This verse beautifully encapsulates the power of silence in deepening our empathy. By being quick to listen and slow to speak, we create a sacred space where others feel truly heard and valued. Imagine your heart as a garden. In the quiet moments of trials, you're not just weathering a storm, you're allowing the rain of others' experiences to water the seeds of compassion within you. Each silent moment is like gentle sunshine, nurturing these seeds until they blossom into a vibrant garden of empathy and understanding. This deepened empathy isn't just a feeling, it's a transformative force that changes how we interact with the world. When we truly understand another's pain, we're more likely to respond with grace, kindness, and patience. We become living embodiments of Christ's love, offering not just words of comfort, but a presence that says, I see you, I hear you, and your pain matters to me. In our fast-paced world, where quick responses and constant noise are the norm, choosing silence can feel counterintuitive. But it's in these quiet moments that God often does His deepest work in our hearts. He uses our silence to attune our spirits to the whispers of those hurting around us, whispers we might have missed in the clamor of our own voices. This silence-born empathy also equips us to minister more effectively. When we truly understand someone's struggles, our words of encouragement become more meaningful, our actions more impactful. We're no longer offering generic platitudes, but speaking directly to the heart of the matter, guided by the deep understanding we've gained through listening. Moreover, as we practice this empathetic silence, we find ourselves growing in patience and wisdom. We learn to withhold judgment, realizing that everyone's journey is unique and complex. This patience reflects God's own patience with us. As He listens to our prayers and understands our hearts, even when we struggle to articulate our needs. Remember, dear friend, that Jesus often withdrew to quiet places to pray and reflect. In following His example, we're not just cultivating empathy, we're drawing closer to the very heart of God. In the silence, we become more attuned to His voice, allowing Him to shape our hearts and guide our responses to others. As you face trials, view each moment of silence not as a void to be filled, but as a precious opportunity to grow in love and understanding. Let your quiet presence speak volumes, 
offering comfort and support in ways that words alone never could. In doing so, you're not just surviving your trials, you're allowing God to use them to mold you into a more compassionate, Christ-like version of yourself. Embrace these silent moments, for they are the soil in which God grows the most beautiful flowers of empathy in the garden of your heart. Your deepened ability to understand and connect with others will not only help you navigate your own trials with grace, but will also make you a beacon of Christ's love in a world desperate for genuine understanding and compassion. Another important aspect to consider is that when trials and tribulations crash against the shores of our lives like relentless waves, it's tempting to cry out, to voice our pain and frustration to anyone who will listen. Yet, in these moments of hardship, God gently urges us to embrace the power of silence. This sacred stillness isn't a sign of weakness or resignation, but rather a profound demonstration of faith that resonates deeply with those around us. Silence, in the face of adversity, becomes our lighthouse, a beacon of hope shining brightly amidst the darkest storms of life. Just as a lighthouse stands firm against crashing waves and howling winds, our quiet composure amid trials speaks volumes about the unshakable peace that dwells within us. This peace, which surpasses all understanding, is a testament to the living God who anchors our souls. As we navigate the tumultuous waters of life's challenges, our silent strength becomes a powerful witness to the world. It's a visual sermon preaching louder than any words could about the hope we have in Christ. When others see us standing firm, lips sealed but hearts open to God's guidance, they catch a glimpse of something extraordinary, a faith that doesn't falter when tested by fire. This silent witness aligns beautifully with the Apostle Peter's words in 1 Peter 3.15 but in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have, but do this with gentleness and respect. Our silence during trials creates curiosity. It prompts others to wonder about the source of our strength, opening doors for us to share our faith with gentleness and respect when the time is right. Imagine your silence as a still, deep river. On the surface, it appears calm and untroubled. But beneath, there's a powerful current of faith, moving steadily towards God's promises. This silent strength doesn't mean we're immune to pain or doubt. Rather, it shows that we've learned to cast our cares upon the Lord, trusting Him to sustain us even when our voices falter. In a world that's constantly clamoring for attention, where complaints and criticisms fill the air like a cacophony, your silence becomes a refreshing oasis. It's a living demonstration of Psalm 4610, Be still and know that I am God. This stillness isn't passive. It's an active choice to trust in God's sovereignty, even when we don't understand His ways. Your silent endurance during trials also mirrors Christ's own example. Remember how Jesus stood silent before his accusers, fulfilling Isaiah's prophecy. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. In your silence, you're not just coping with trials. You're walking in the footsteps of your Savior. This doesn't mean we should never speak about our struggles. There's a time to share burdens with trusted brothers and sisters in Christ. But in the heat of the moment, when emotions run high and faith is tested, Silence can be our most powerful response. It's in these quiet moments that we often hear God's voice most clearly, guiding us through the storm. As you embrace this silent strength, remember that you're not alone. The Holy Spirit dwells within you, providing comfort and wisdom beyond words. Your silence creates space for His voice to resound in your heart, offering divine perspective on your trials. So, dear friend, when trials come, and they will, remember the power of your silent witness. Let your quiet faith speak volumes about the God you serve. Your silence in the storm may just be the testimony that draws someone else to the safe harbor of God's love and grace. In your stillness, be the lighthouse that guides others. We should also remember that when we find ourselves in the midst of life's trials, it's natural to want to speak out, to defend ourselves, to seek answers, or simply to vent our frustrations. 
Yet there's profound wisdom in choosing silence during these challenging times. Silence isn't just the absence of noise. It's a powerful tool that God uses to reveal hidden truths about ourselves and our circumstances. Imagine your trial as an archaeological dig site. The surface may appear barren or chaotic, much like how our situations can feel overwhelming at first glance. But beneath this surface lies a wealth of treasures waiting to be discovered. As you embrace silence, you're allowing God, the master archaeologist, to carefully brush away the debris of your worries, doubts, and preconceptions. In these quiet moments, free from the distraction of our own words, we create space for God's gentle whispers to be heard. It's like turning down the volume on a noisy radio to finally hear the soft, melodious tune playing in the background. This quietude allows the Holy Spirit to work within us, illuminating truths that we might have otherwise overlooked. Consider the words of the psalmist in Psalm 139, 23. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. This invitation for divine introspection often finds its fullest expression in silence. As we quiet our external voices, our internal landscape becomes clearer. We begin to see patterns in our thoughts, the true motivations behind our actions, and the areas where we need growth and healing. Silence also cultivates patience and trust. In a world that demands instant answers and quick fixes, choosing to remain silent is a profound act of faith. It's saying, Lord, I trust your timing. I believe you're working even when I can't see it. This patience often leads to more profound revelations than any hasty words could have produced. Moreover, silence in trials can be a form of worship. It's an acknowledgement that God is sovereign, that his understanding surpasses ours, and that sometimes the most faithful response is simply to be still in his presence. It echoes the truth found in Psalm 46.10, Be still and know that I am God. As you practice silence, you might find that your perspective on your trial begins to shift. What once seemed like an insurmountable obstacle may reveal itself as an opportunity for growth. The pain that felt senseless might unveil a deeper purpose. Silence allows us to step back and see the bigger picture of God's work in our lives. Remember, dear friend, that in your silence, you're not alone. The Holy Spirit is actively working, comforting, guiding, and revealing. This quiet space becomes holy ground, where transformation occurs not through your striving, but through your yielding. So, in your next trial, resist the urge to fill the air with words. Instead, embrace the silence. Allow it to become a sacred space where God can excavate the hidden treasures within your heart and situation. Trust that in this quiet, God is speaking volumes, revealing truths that will not only help you navigate your current trial, but will also equip you for the journey ahead. A crucial point to bear in mind is that when life's trials come crashing down upon us like towering waves, our instinct is often to cry out, to voice our pain and frustration to anyone who will listen. Yet, in these moments of turmoil, God gently beckons us towards a different path, the path of silence. This silence, far from being passive or weak, is a powerful tool that cultivates one of the most precious virtues in a believer's life, patience. In our fast-paced world, where instant gratification is the norm, patience has become a rare commodity. We've grown accustomed to quick fixes and immediate results. But God's ways are not our ways, and His timing is not our timing. When He calls us to be silent during our trials, He's inviting us to step into a sacred space where patience can take root and flourish. Imagine your soul as a vineyard and patience as the finest wine produced there. Just as a master vintner knows that the most exquisite wines require time to mature, our Heavenly Father understands that true patience, the kind that sustains us through life's harshest seasons, needs time to develop. In the quiet moments of our trials, as we resist the urge to complain or demand immediate solutions, we're allowing this precious vintage to age beautifully. 
the psalmist reminds us, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. This verse paints a vivid picture of the internal struggle we face when injustice seems to prevail. Our human nature cries out for swift justice, for our voice to be heard. But God calls us to a higher path, the path of silent trust and patient endurance. As we embrace this silence, something remarkable begins to happen. Our spiritual senses, often dulled by the constant noise of life, begin to sharpen. We start to perceive God's presence more keenly to hear his still small voice with greater clarity. In this silence, we're not just passively waiting, we're actively engaging in a profound act of faith. We're declaring to the heavens and to our own hearts that we trust God's timing and his methods. This cultivated patience becomes a testimony to those around us. In a world quick to anger and swift to speak, a believer who remains calm and composed in the face of trials stands out like a beacon of hope. Your silence speaks volumes about your faith, showcasing a strength that comes not from your own abilities, but from your deep-rooted trust in God. Moreover, this patience nurtured in silence prepares us for greater things. Just as a tree's roots grow deeper during seasons of drought, making it stronger and more resilient. Our patience developed during trials equips us to handle even greater challenges in the future. It's in these quiet moments of endurance that our character is shaped, our faith is refined, and our hope is anchored more firmly in God's promises. Remember, beloved, that every moment of patient silence is an investment in your spiritual growth. It's an act of worship, a declaration of trust, and a powerful weapon against the enemy's attempts to discourage you. As you cultivate this patience, you're not just passively waiting for your circumstances to change. You're actively participating in God's transformative work in your life. So when the trials come, and they will, embrace the silence. Let it be a sanctuary where your patience can grow and mature. Trust that in this quiet place, God is working behind the scenes orchestrating events for your good and his glory. Your patience, cultivated in these moments of silence, will bear fruit in due season, yielding a harvest of peace, wisdom, and unshakable. Lastly, when life's trials and tribulations threaten to overwhelm us, our natural instinct is often to speak out, to complain, to question, to despair. Yet in these moments of hardship, God gently calls us to a place of sacred silence, this silence is not merely the absence of words, but a profound spiritual posture that prepares our hearts to receive His divine deliverance. As we quiet our voices, we create space for God's voice to resound within us. In the stillness, we begin to hear the whispers of His wisdom and feel the touch of His comforting presence. Our silence becomes an act of surrender, a humble acknowledgement that our own words and efforts fall short in the face of life's greatest challenges. The Lord assures us in Exodus 14, 14, the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. This powerful promise invites us to release our grip on the situation and allow God to work on our behalf. When we cease our anxious chatter and frantic attempts to solve everything ourselves, we position our hearts to witness God's miraculous intervention. Imagine yourself as an empty vessel, waiting to be filled with God's power and grace. In your silence, you are emptying yourself of fear, doubt, and human limitations. You're creating sacred space for the Almighty to pour in His strength, wisdom, and perfect solutions. Your quietness becomes an act of faith, declaring your trust that God's plans for you are greater than anything you could orchestrate on your own. In this holy hush, God begins to move in ways that surpass our understanding. He aligns circumstances softens hearts, and opens doors that we never even knew existed. Your silence allows His voice to thunder, His arm to stretch out in power on your behalf. While you wait quietly, God is orchestrating a deliverance so magnificent it will leave you in awe. This time of silent preparation is precious to the Lord. He treasures these moments when His children lean fully into His embrace, wordlessly expressing their complete dependence on Him. Your silence speaks volumes to heaven, declaring your unwavering faith 
even in the midst of the storm. As you cultivate this practice of stillness before God during trials, you'll find your spiritual senses becoming keener. You'll start to recognize His hand at work, even in the smallest details of your situation. Your heart will swell with anticipation, knowing that your faithful Father is weaving together a tapestry of redemption and blessing from the very threads of your hardship. Remember, dear friend, that your silence is not passive or weak. It is an active, powerful choice to align yourself with God's perfect timing and methods. It is a bold declaration of trust in His goodness and sovereignty. In your quiet surrender, you are partnering with T. So in your current trial, whatever it may be, I encourage you to embrace this sacred silence. Let your wordless trust become a sweet fragrance rising to heaven. Allow the peace that passes, understanding to guard your heart and mind as you wait expectantly for God's deliverance. For surely, He who calmed the raging sea with a word will speak into your situation with power and love beyond measure. Your season of silent preparation is not in vain. It is the prelude to a magnificent display of God's faithfulness and power in your life. Hold fast to hope, for your deliverance is at hand. The God who parts seas and moves mountains is working tirelessly on your behalf. In His perfect timing, you will see His salvation unfold before your eyes, and your mouth will be filled with joyous praise for His wondrous deeds. My friends, let's pray a prayer of gratitude and praise to God. When we express our gratitude and praise, we open the door for God's abundant blessings and joy to flow into our lives. The Bible tells us in Psalm 104, Enter His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him and praise His name. So with hearts full of appreciation and voices lifted in praise, let us approach our Heavenly Father in prayer and gratitude. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Creator of all that is seen and unseen, Almighty and Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we come before you today with hearts filled with gratitude and praise. We acknowledge your infinite wisdom, boundless love, and unwavering faithfulness in our lives. Your grace and mercy have sustained us through every challenge and blessed us with countless gifts. We praise you for the beauty of your creation, from the majestic mountains to the vast oceans, from the intricate details of a flower to the immense expanse of the universe. Your handiwork surrounds us, reminding us of your power and creativity. We are in awe of your greatness and humbled by your attention to every detail of our lives. We thank you for the gift of life itself, for every breath we take and every moment we experience. You have given us the ability to love, to learn, to grow, and to make a difference in this world. We are grateful for the people you have placed in our lives, our family, friends, and communities, who support, encourage, and inspire us. We praise you for your unconditional love and unending compassion. Despite our shortcomings and mistakes, you continue to embrace us with open arms. Your forgiveness knows no bounds, and your grace transforms our lives. We are eternally grateful for the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross to redeem us and restore our relationship with you. We thank you for the blessings you have bestowed upon us, the roof over our heads, the food on our tables, the clothes on our backs, and the opportunities we have to pursue our dreams. We recognize that every good thing in our lives comes from your hand, and we are filled with gratitude for your provision and care. We praise you for the hope and peace you bring to our hearts, even in the midst of trials and tribulations. Your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, guiding us through the darkest of times. We find comfort in your promises and strength in your presence. As we offer this prayer of gratitude and praise, we ask that you continue to work in our lives, molding us into the people you have called us to be. Help us to live lives that honor and glorify you, sharing your love and light with all those we encounter. May our words and actions be a reflection of your goodness and grace. We thank you for hearing our prayer and for your constant presence in our lives. We offer this prayer in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Dear friends, let us gather together in a prayer of faith and obedience. 
recognizing that God's wisdom surpasses our own understanding. The book of James reminds us, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. As we face trials and challenges, it is often our natural inclination to voice our concerns, complaints, and doubts. However, God calls us to a different response, one of trust, patience, and silence before Him. In the midst of our struggles, let us remember that God is sovereign and His ways are perfect. He knows the end from the beginning, and His plans for us are always good. When we choose to keep our mouths shut during trials, we demonstrate our faith in God's ability to work all things together for our benefit and His glory. As we come before the Lord in prayer, let us humble ourselves and submit to His divine wisdom. May we resist the temptation to speak hastily or complain, and instead, let us wait patiently upon the Lord, trusting that He will guide us, strengthen us, and provide for us in His perfect timing. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today with humble hearts, seeking your wisdom and guidance during the trials and tribulations that we face in our lives. We know that you are a loving and compassionate God and that you have a plan for each and every one of us, even when we cannot see it ourselves. As we navigate through the challenges that life throws our way, we often find ourselves wanting to speak out, to voice our frustrations, fears, and doubts. We may feel the need to complain, to blame others, or to question your plan for us. But we know, deep in our hearts, that this is not what you want for us. Your word tells us that there is a time to speak and a time to remain silent. During our trials, we believe that you are calling us to keep our mouths shut, to trust in your plan, and to lean on your strength. We know that our words have power, and that they can either build up or tear down both ourselves and those around us. Help us, Lord, to resist the urge to speak out of turn during our trials. Give us the patience and the faith to wait on you, to trust in your timing, and to believe that you are working all things together for our good. When we are tempted to complain or to speak negatively, remind us of your goodness and your faithfulness. We know that keeping our mouths shut during trials is not easy. It goes against our natural inclinations and desires. But we also know that it is in these moments of silence and trust that we can grow closer to you, that we can deepen our faith, and that we can experience your peace that surpasses all understanding. As we go through these trials, help us to keep our eyes fixed on you, Lord. Help us to remember that you are the source of our strength, our hope, and our joy. Fill us with your Holy Spirit and give us the courage to face each day with a positive attitude and a grateful heart. We thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us, even in the midst of our struggles. We thank you for the people that you have placed in our lives to support and encourage us. And we pray that you would use us to be a blessing to others who may be going through their own trials. Lord, we know that you have a purpose for every trial that we face. Help us to trust in your plan, even when we cannot see the outcome. Give us the faith to believe that you are working behind the scenes and that you will use even the most difficult circumstances for our good and for your glory. We pray for your protection and your provision during these times of trial. We know that you are a God who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ask or imagine. We trust in your love and your faithfulness and we surrender our lives into your hands. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. Thank you for your constant presence in our lives and for the assurance that we can always come to you with our fears, our doubts, and our struggles. We pray that you would continue to guide us, to strengthen us, and to fill us with your peace. We ask all of these things in the precious name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear beloved friends, as we come to the close of this message, I want to leave you with a powerful reminder of the wisdom and sovereignty of our loving Heavenly Father. When we find ourselves in the midst of trials and tribulations, it is often our natural inclination to speak out, to question, and to seek understanding. But God, in His infinite wisdom, calls us to a higher response, one of trust, faith, and silence. 
By remaining silent, we create space for God to work in our lives, to mold our character, and to reveal His purpose. We demonstrate our trust in His divine plan, acknowledging that His ways are higher than our ways, and His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. In the quietness of our souls, we open ourselves to hear the still, small voice of God, guiding us and comforting us in our trials. We allow Him to be our defender, our advocate, and our strength. As we surrender our need to speak in control, we experience the peace that surpasses all understanding, guarding our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Remember, beloved, that your trials are not without purpose. They are divinely orchestrated opportunities for growth, refinement, and testimony. As you navigate these difficult waters, keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Trust that He is working all things together for your good and His glory. In the silence, embrace the promises of God, knowing that He will never leave you nor forsake you. Lean into His everlasting arms, finding rest and refuge in His presence. Allow the trials to deepen your intimacy with Him as you discover the depths of His love, grace, and faithfulness. As you go forth from this moment, may you be encouraged to keep your mouth shut and your heart open to the workings of God. May you find strength in the quiet places, hope in the hidden moments, and joy in the journey. And may you emerge from these trials as a living testament to the goodness and faithfulness of our incredible God. Thank you for joining me in this message. May you go forth with a renewed commitment to trust God, to lean on His understanding, and to allow Him to work mightily in and through your life. God bless you, my dear friends. Keep pressing on, keep trusting, and keep your mouth shut as you watch God move in extraordinary ways. Amen.